From the Murray's green basin to the dusty outback, I won't my Matilda all over. Then in 1915, my country said so. It's time to stop rambling, there's work to be done. So they gave me a tin hat and gave me a gun. They sent me away to the war It's well I remember That terrible day When our blood stained the land and the water And how in that hell that they call Suvla Bay We were butchered like lambs for the slaughter Johnny took, he was ready, he primed himself well. He rained us with bullets, and then he showered us with shell. And in five minutes flat, we were all blown to hell. Never knew there was worse things than dying. And I see by your graveside you were only nineteen. When you join the glorious fallen in 1916 Well I hope you died quick And I hope you died clean Oh Willie McBride was it slow and obscene Did they beat the drum slowly Did they play the fife lowly Did they down the death march As they lowered you down did the bugles play the last post and chorus? Did the pipes play the flowers of the forest? Some 100,000 Canadians who served, there were more than 10,600 
casualties, 3,598 of which were fatal. Today we reflect on an event that has a distinctly Canadian importance in history. We commemorate and remember the service of the Canadian ex Expeditionary Forces made up of troops drawn from all parts of the country. It's my distinct pleasure to first of all call upon the Premier of Province, Honorary Christopher Clark, to make some comments. Thank you, thank you, Robert, and um, thank you to the Fort Woody Historical Society for thousands of hours of work in the dirt and the and the sun and the rain and the wind. Um, so many of the people in the crowd today, so many people behind me, have just done so much to help all of us remember these important events in Canadian history. And so today, um, we remember what happened. On April 9, 1917, after meticulous planning, Canadian soldiers stormed Vimy Ridge at daybreak. All four divisions of the Canadian Ex Expeditionary Force fought together for the first time under the command of Arthur Curry, a Canadian. Their objective was to capture the high ground, high ground that the French had been seeking unsuccessfully to capture for several years prior. High ground that cost 150,000 French lives. But for Canada, it also came at terrible cost. A moment in Canadian history, though, that gave Canada its place in the world as an independent country for the first time. A place on the world stage that belonged to Canada alone. 10,000 Canadian casualties, including 3,600 who were killed. And in 1917, to put this in context, there were about 400,000 British Columbians. 55,000 British Columbians volunteered to fight. That's the highest per capita in service of any province in Canada. And at Vimy and throughout the war, 6,200 British Columbians lost their lives. And every single one of them was a beloved son or a father a nephew, a niece, a sister. Every one of them belonged to people who loved them. And so to help honor their legacy, our province contributed $350,000 to the Vimy Foundation to support the creation of a centennial park at the site of the battle, including planting 100 Vimy oak trees. Those trees are the direct descendants of acorns collected following the battle. They were planted four deep to represent the four battalions, the four divisions. And as we honor such bravery and sacrifice today, we also remember that we honor the men and women who continue to serve in our Canadian forces here and overseas. They risk their lives to carry on that proud tradition, to keep us all safe. And last, as we reflect on the, uh, the work that's been done here and the memory that every, all of the volunteers in the Historical Society are helping us to keep. We remember that there is nothing good about war. Nothing. But there is everything good about remembering those men and women who go to war, who give the ultimate sacrifice so that they can protect us. They remind us what duty looks like. Duty to family, to community, and to country. They remind us that with, in protecting our values, sometimes it requires incredible sacrifice. And today, in an era of cynicism, in an era of materialism, we must be reminded that heroes still exist unvarnished, true heroes, willing to make tremendous sacrifice, not for themselves, but for our country, for our values, 
for us. And we will never forget it. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful words, wonderful thoughts. Next, I would like to call on Roger Kinney, the MP for Brooklyn, to bring comments from the federal government and the Minister of Veterans Affairs. Roger. Honored veterans, serving members, legionnaires, distinguished guests, it's a privilege to be here today remarking the centennial anniversary of the Battle of Dimmy Ridge, a pivotal event in Canada's military history that was of singular importance during the Great War. The war, it was said, to end all wars. At the start of that war, Canada was a young, increasingly diverse nation with a population of less than 8 million. More than 650,000 Canadians enlisted. Think about that. One of the 12 Canadians would serve in uniform. Of these, more than 66,000 would give their lives. These statistics, which might be just numbers on the page for some, are heavy reminders of the tragedies of war. 100 years ago today, on April 9th, 1917, the four divisions of the Canadian Corps fought side by side for the first time. The bravery, ingenuity, and determination of these men helped secure this important victory. But the victory at Vimy Ridge came at great cost. In four days of battle, more than 10,600 Canadian soldiers were killed or wounded. Today, tens of thousands of people will come together overseas at the Vimy, Vimy Memorial in France, at the National Military, at the National War Memorial in Ottawa, and in communities like this one across the country to pay tribute to those who fought and to those who made the ultimate sacrifice. This battle was a major achievement in our history. They did something that nobody else could do. And in doing so, they helped build a legacy for our future and our national identity. And for this, we are all forever grateful. Today is an emotional day for many of us. Next, I would like to call upon Lynn Donnelly, the Member of Parliament representing Port Moody for Parliament, to make some comments. Thank you, Robert. I'd like to acknowledge that we're on the traditional territory of the Coast Salish First Nations. I'd like to thank the Fort Moody Station Museum for hosting this important event today. Dignitaries, honored veterans, guests. On Monday, April 9th, 1917, four Canadian divisions 100,000 strong launched their assault on Vimy Ridge, fighting all together for the first time. By midnight on Tuesday, Vimy Ridge had fallen, but so had 3,598 young Canadian soldiers, along with 11,000 wounded comrades. 
Thousands of words have been spoken and written about the Battle of Vimy Ridge. Words like bravery, duty, courage, and sacrifice. Fitting words to describe the heroes of Vimy. But think of also of words like heartbreak, sorrow, suffering, and despair. The things those young soldiers carried with them on their journey. They are all gone now. But those who fought at Vimy opened the way to victory. Vimy Ridge has been described as the battle that defined our country. A turning point in Canadian history. The birth of our nation. Legends grew up around it and the construction of Vimy, the Vimy Memorial in 1936 and the emotional pilgrimage of the Canadian veterans and civilians to France began to shape how Vimy is seen today. Vimy has become a uniquely Canadian symbol of what we value most, peace, freedom, and mutual respect. It is the beacon for a solemn tribute to our Canadian soldiers from a very grateful nation, lest we forget. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Next, I would like to call upon Linda Reamer, the member of the Legislative Assembly representing Fort Newton, Coquitlam, for a few comments. Linda? Thank you. On behalf of my constituents in Fort Newton, Coquitlam, including Ann Moore and Bill Carrot, I want to say it's so heartening to see you all here today to help commemorate 100 years since the Battle of Vimy Ridge. In particular, I would like to thank the Port Moody Heritage Society for putting together today's observance. It is a natural extension of the McKnight Centennial Trench display intended to bring history to life for a new generation. 425,000 Canadians, both men and women, went overseas to serve in World War I, which at the time was only known as the Great War. With a population of only 8 million at the time, this represented a significant portion of the population of our country. At Vimy Ridge, 170,000 of our soldiers gathered to achieve what was thought to be unachievable. By the time Canadians arrived at Vimy, more than 100,000 French soldiers had already been killed or wounded, attempting to take the high ground north of the town of Arras. It was one of the most heavily defended German positions on the Western Front. And yet, through careful planning and preparation, right down to the platoon level, a costly victory was achieved. Most significantly of all, it was the first time all four Canadian divisions gathered together as a unified fighting force. This meant that Canadians from all parts of the country fought together for the first time. In honor of the Canadians and British Columbians involved in the victory at Vimy Ridge in 1917, the government of British Columbia has already been, as already mentioned, is contributing $350,000 to the Vimy Foundation to support the creation of a centennial park at the site of the battle. The Vimy Foundation Centennial Park will be located adjacent to the Vimy Monument in France. This unique area will be comprised of 100 Vimy oak trees symbolizing the centennial. <coughs> These trees are direct descendants of acorns collected following the battle in April 1917 and will be planted in a circular pattern four deep to represent the four additions, divisions of the Canadian forces that fought together for the first time at the Battle of Vimy Ridge. It is therefore an honor to bring official greetings on behalf of my constituents. Thank you, lest we forget. Next, I'd like to call upon His Worship, Mayor Mike Clay, to make some comments on behalf of the city. His Worship. Thank you, Robert. Uh, Premier Clark, MPs McKinnon and Donnelly, MLA, Linda Reamer, uh, our esteemed dignitaries on stage with us, David Ritchie and the Formula Historical Society, and everybody who's here today. 
I, on behalf of the city and city council, I want to thank you for coming today and for helping us uh, in this remembrance celebration. And there, there's a conflict, I think, in, in most of us where we're honoring, but also celebrating. Uh, there's thousands of Canadians that gave their life, that, that said, we're not going to let this happen. We want to protect our way of life, and we want to make sure that everybody in the world... Th this was a time when a, a leader and a country and countries were saying, we want to eliminate you. We want you gone. And these Canadian soldiers, and, and you look at the equipment that they had to fight with these heavy uniforms, these weapons that maybe would hit their mark 20% of the time, these canvas-covered troop carriers, these airplanes. This was a difficult, difficult time for people to go and fight on behalf of our Canadian way of life and to protect us from losing all that we cherished and all that we found important. I came down here today and I'm watching people walk down the street with their strollers to go to the park and people at the breweries and people just generally going about their Sunday life in Port Moody. And we owe all of this to all of those that gave their life to say, we're not going to let you push us around like that. And we all hate war and we don't want to go to war and we don't want to celebrate war, but we do want to celebrate, as was mentioned, what they gave us to protect our way of life. So to the, all the people in uniform, our, our veterans of the Legion, we can only say thank you, and we don't, most of us, people of my generation, don't even know what that means to, to, to what you went through to give us what we have today. I grew up, my grandfather fought in World War One. my great-grandfather, so he fought in World War One for the British, and then he lived right down here in Port Moody, and, well, sorry, started my family's tradition here in Port Moody, and uh, a time that I can never imagine, but I thank everybody who gave us this life that we are privileged to live today. And on behalf, again, of all of us in the city of Port Moody, I want to thank all of you for coming out today and uh, keeping this in our thoughts forever. We live in a time now where terrorism and, and, and events are, are, again, threatening our way of life. And as much as we hate ever to fight back, at times you have to. So we thank everybody who stands up for our country and our way of life. And thank you for coming today. Thank you, Your Worship. Next, I'd like to call upon Comrade Dan Coyle to speak on behalf of the BC and Yukon Royal Canadian Region. Okay. Honored guests, officials, veterans, serving members, and all of us as proud Canadians. I'm glad to represent today the Royal Canadian Legion BC Yukon Provincial Command alongside the Port Moody Branch of our newest Minister and District Zone. Not only is this a special year of Canada's 150th birthday, but today marks the 100th anniversary when we truly came into our own as a nation. We all know war is a bad thing, but our country has never been shy to step forward to help others in need many times now. This is remarkable with our short history and small population for the size of this great land. The Battle of Emmy Ridge ranks high in Canadian history. It was a triumph in that it was a victory, but at the same time a tragedy, as 3,598 Canadians died, and another 7,004 were wounded. It was the first time all four Canadian divisions fought side by side. Canadian Brigadier General Ross said of the Canadian victory, he witnessed the birth of a nation. For the Allies, winning the ridge would destabilize the German lines across the region into Flanders. A loss meant the German positions were now open to the Allied guns above them. First wave of 15,000 Canadians successfully captured the front line. Three days later, they ran the Germans right off the ridge. The Canadians did what no other army could, winning the Allies a victory that shifted the course of the war to a final victory the next year. Four Canadians won the Victoria Cross. 11,285 Canadians died in France with no known grave, thus the Vimy Ridge Memorial. The battle became symbolic of Canada's contributions and sacrifices to the war with 60,000 dead. It led to Canada's change of status from colony to dominion and commonwealth member. Comrades and friends, lest we forget, lest we forget. Thank you, Comrade. Next, I would like to call to the podium the same brand representing the war, war ants for Canada. Mm -hmm.
Good afternoon. My name is Amy Brennan. I'm in grade 10 and I am proud to be here on behalf of the Warrens. This event brings unique perspective to commemorate the Battle of Vineyard Ridge. But for me, as a member of the Warrants Operation Legacy and the Warrants Child Amputee Chant Program, it means a little more. After the First World War, war amputee veterans, including those who fought and lost limbs at the Battle of Vimy Ridge, gathered together and started the Warrants. This organization has been a big part of my life, as I was born without my left arm below the elbow. Throughout my life, the Warrants has given me the most loving support and encouragement in everything and anything I do. The Warrants pays for amputees' prosthetics and helps us through any struggles we might have. I got my first prosthetic when I was six months old. But the Warrens didn't just stop with supporting me, they also helped my parents with any questions they might have about raising a child as you do. As we got older, I wanted to try different activities like skipping rope, but I needed a little more help than most kids. After seeing a kid at a Warrant seminar with a prosthetic that helped to do that, I told my mom that I wanted to do that too. Through the Warrants, I received a new prosthetic to help me do exactly that. The Warrants has provided me with prosthetics to help me ride a bike, do push-ups, and that anything I might need a little more help with. By participating in speeches, replaying ceremonies, and even going to Juno Beach, I have had the opportunity to pay my respects and show others how proud I am to be connected to these men. Today, I would like to honor those veterans who fought at Vimy Ridge, some of whom lost their limbs during the battle. One such amputee is Curly Christian who lost both his arms and legs at Vinny Ridge, and was the only quadruple amputee to have survived the First World War. Another is Ralph Hodgson, who enlisted with the 24th Battalion in Toronto, who lost his leg at Vinny Ridge. After the Second World War, Ralph met almost every single ship that returned to Canada, encouraging the new group of war amputees. Pierre Slemon lost his leg at Vinny Ridge after a mortar shell hit his company. He estimated that 600 out of the 1,000 men in his company died at Vimy Ridge. And Fred Zulk was a member of the War Amps Vancouver branch. After losing his arm at Vimy Ridge, he was very active and helped many amputee veterans returning from the Second World War. As a member of the War Amps Chant Program, I have the duty to honor the First World War veterans who created the War Amps and began the legacy of amputees helping amputees, which is carried on today through myself and many amputees across Canada. There aren't enough thank yous in the world to say how thankful I am for these men, because if it weren't for these brave soldiers, I would not be who I am today. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Very well spoken words. Next, I'd like to call upon David Ritzy. President of the Portrait of Heritage Society, to make comments on behalf of the Society. David? Thank you, Robert. Uh, it is indeed an honor and a pleasure to host this event uh, today on behalf of the uh, Society and the Museum. Uh, I would like, first of all, uh, to thank uh, our sponsors and uh, contributors and donors. Firstly, for their financial support, to thank the Government of Canada through the Canada Remembers Program of Veteran Affairs Canada. We thank the Government of British Columbia through, uh, through the Office of MLA Linda Reamer. We thank the City of Port Moody for their generous support during the events and festivals monetary grant. For their community and in-kind contributions, we thank the Flavel Sawmill Company Past the Polo Restaurant and Fred Sufi. We thank the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 119, Port Moody, Aragon Construction Management Corporation, and Remax Realty. For the exhibits on display here today, we thank the Canadian Museum of Flight from Langley, the BC Vintage Truck Museum of Surrey, uh, part of the uh, Surrey. Uh, Historical Society. We thank Ivan Sayers, uh, clothing historian. We thank the War Amps of Canada, the Royal Canadian Legion, BC Yukon Command, Veterans Affairs Canada, 
and the BC Veterans Commemorative Association. Following completion of these on-stage ceremonies, I invite all of you to participate in uh, an opportunity to remember and respect the Canadian fatalities at Vimy Ridge. We, uh, we will be placing 3,598 poppies on the uh, Vimy commemorative poppy wall uh, adjacent to the McKnight Trench, just around behind the museum. There will become uh, one poppy on the wall for each Canadian soldier killed in action in those handful of days. Uh, veterans who have not done so earlier today or yesterday will go first and put a poppy on the wall, followed by the on-stage dignitaries and participants, and then all the participants gathered here will go. Uh, if we don't have 3,598 people here today, uh, you are invited to, uh, to put more than one poppy on the wall in order that uh, each and every one of those uh, soldiers who made the ultimate sacrifice will be appropriately honored. And uh, before I go back to Robert, I would like to obviously say thanks to uh, Jim and Marcus and John and Corey and all the other volunteers. Uh, no, this would be here in the event. Thank you. Thank you, David. The Battle of the New Ridge is but one of many to represent Canada's overwhelming role in World War I. Our service today is one of remembrance that recalls all of the sacrifices made by Canada during the Great War. Please stand, and I call upon the Sergeant of Arms to lead us through the remembered service. Sergeant. Piper, sound the lament.
They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Bugler, Sandra Valley. <laughs>